All right, we have an awesome segment for you today in Rick's Corner. Obviously, here we share simple solutions for common questions. And Rick, you created a nice little presentation for us. A lot of people in the support center have been asking how to clone or modify the contact us form. And I think you have some simple steps to kind of guide us through that process. Yes, that is completely correct, Jason. So today we we took some time to create a, a new contact us form. And I'll go ahead and take the necessary steps so that everyone can go ahead and complete this on, on your end. Um, there is an added functionality to this form, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of people clone this specific form. Um, the, uh, we're gonna go over all the details in just a bit, but yeah, that's um, that's basically it. It's a, it's a cool, very easy to, to handle process that is gonna add a lot of value to your project. And what are like one or two main reasons why someone would want to clone or modify the the contact us form from their website well there there are several reasons right the uh, depending on the type of information that you might want to request from the user of the website that will be one one reason why you might want to edit this um, you might want to request more information you will, might want to request less information um, you could also request more information that's geared towards the industry that you're currently um, providing the service to um, like you, the, the contact us form, like everyone knows that comes by default with all Brilliant Directories websites has very, uh, very limited information here in the, on the form. So since you are offering this to the public, you might as well take advantage of this functionality and you could add additional information, take advantage of the full, uh, full um, form options that are available in the forms manager, which is super fun <laughs> and again we're going to get to that in just a second so yes yeah, as we were talking about before the contact us form comes by default with all brilliant directories websites this is basically how it looks um the uh like we mentioned before very limited information basically just the name the email the phone number and a brief message from the user of of the uh of the website so what I did here was let me go ahead and jump to the one that I created um this of course is just an example um, but I simply added three more fields um, using the different form fields options that we have available in the forms manager. Um, as you can see, this, this first field that I added allows the user of the website to select more than one option. Here underneath, we have the dropdown. It looks very, very nice, very uh, organized. And then underneath that, the third field that I added was the, or is the one that actually allows the user to only select one. So you can go ahead and only choose one of these. So back to the reasons why um, you might want to clone the contact us form, um, the added functionality of, of sending out an email from this form is something that a lot of customers and a lot of, of you guys um, are very interested in. And as we always say in brand directories, when you want to create a new form, it's always better to clone a form than to start from scratch. So let me go ahead and show you guys how easy it is to clone a form. Um, let me go ahead and jump here. Uh, another tab. The one that I have here is just the, uh, the contact us form. Go ahead. We don't really need that one here. Um, this is the one that I created, which is the, the new contact us form that I modified and cloned. Um, and this is how the actual form looks like. Let me start from, from the beginning. So let me go ahead and jump over to the form manager so that you guys are, you're, you guys are probably very familiar with this section of the backend. Um, here on the top, what we have are the customized forms. So in this case, well, this is the one that I created. So this is the first one that's gonna show up here. And we have underneath that the default forms. Those, the, those are the ones that again, by default come on with all Brilliant Directories websites. Now, when you clone the form, let me go ahead and click here, edit. So we go into the form, quote unquote, into the form. Um, and what you have here is the ability, the, uh, you have the, uh, the option, the opportunity um, to just go ahead and clone the form, right? Super easy and super straightforward. Um, but underneath that, what you have is also the ability to control the settings of the form. And this is when it really comes into play, like the whole receiving an email or sending out an email when the form is submitted, that's where you are going to go about editing this. Before jumping into those settings, I wanna briefly go over the form fields real quick here. These are the, the ones that I created. So as you can see here, this is a checkbox select, as we saw before on the, on the live form. 
it basically allows you to select multiple options from a list that you're going to add here. Um, very important, if you guys uh, forget to add the database variable name, then the whole form field is not going to work. So keep that in mind. You want to you want to make sure that you add a, a variable name on that field and um, that it's also unique. It's very important, very important to mention. Um, right next to it, what you have, of course, is the field label name. So this is what the user of the form or the website is going to be able to see. So yeah, this is the uh, the checkbox select. Here we have a quite a few options for you to choose from. So I went in, 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 in this example, I just selected the, the checkbox select. Uh, underneath that one, we have, of course, the drop down. Again, very, very uh, organized way to add a few options for your user to choose from. And underneath that one, the third one is the uh, radio select, which is, yeah, basically just the, the way in which your user is going to be able to choose one of the options that you're going to lay out for them. So yeah, again, the same fields, very important. Keep an eye out on the database variable name that sometimes um, sometimes we will receive that field and then the whole form field doesn't work properly. So uh, Rick, uh, so regarding yeah, the database variable name, um, are, do you have any tips for those? Like, are you allowed to use uh, spaces in between there or like weird characters or should you just limit it to uh, uh, alpha, the alphabet letters and numbers? Yeah, that's a great question, Jason. And we strongly recommend, uh, or actually, it's it's recommending 100% to to stay to stick with the uh, with the letters and the numbers, alphanumeric all the way. No, um, no, no spaces. The spaces does break the uh, the functionality, so avoid the spaces. If you need to add a space, I use a uh, Un underscore underscore correct the underscore symbol. So that would allow you to separate if, if you want to go ahead and use two words. You can use one, like just type it all together. That's also going to work. So yeah, that's a, that's a great question. All right, so when when you have the form customized, the system is going to allow you to save it, right? In which in other terms, it's basically cloning the form. In this case, well, you're going to add some more information. So it'll be like customizing the form. Uh, but then it, what we're going to be able to do again is just go and check out those uh, form settings. Let me go ahead and open those up here. So very, very straightforward um, information on the general settings, just the name of the of the form that you're going to be uh, editing here. You can go ahead and use any type of name that you would like. But keep in mind that you also have to have a unique form variable name, which uh, basically the same the same principles that we talked about before with regards to the database um, values, those same those same um, parameters apply to this field. So keep that in mind. Um, more importantly though, what we're gonna be focusing on is gonna be the email settings. So let's go ahead and jump over to that tab here. And these email settings are what control, what goes out when the form is submitted. Right. So if the user of the website again fills out that form, it takes the time to share the valuable information that they want to share with you as a directory owner. Um, then here is where you're going to control what happens next. So if you want to send an email after that form is submitted, then please go ahead and just switch that to yes. <laughs> That's basically it. That's all, all you have to do. Super straightforward. Um, what we have underneath are more detailed settings, and we're going to go over those real quick here. We have the option to choose a specific email template to be submitted when the form is completed. So that's uh, that's important to to mention. If you want to if you want to edit the default template that's used, we always recommend creating the template first and then selecting that new template from this drop down. Right, that's basically the way that it's going to work. Um, but yeah, by default, it, it's going to use the uh, contact us. Then underneath that, what we have is the option to send out the email to the admin, basically just using the uh, the admin's website email, or you can go ahead and specify another email right underneath that. It says email address or admin email address, sorry. And you can go ahead and add a valid email address, which the system in turn is going to use when the form is submitted. And last but not least, we have the... Uh, the option to choose the, the template that's used to um, submit the information to the admin of the website. So, yeah, it's very straightforward. 
Now, this is really helpful because based on the type of form you're creating, you can send a message to the person after they uh, they fill out that form, a specific message. But Rick, I do want to note, though, the reason why cloning, for example, the contact us form is, is important for situations like this is the, these email settings don't work yet um, with any or all the forms uh, in your BD database. Um, so if you're looking to send a message after someone fills out a form, I would recommend sticking with um, cloning the contact us form. Uh, but soon uh, we do have it in the queue that the, these email settings will work for any and all forms uh, submitted from your BD website. So that's something to look forward to as well. 100%. And thank you for mentioning that, Jason. The, uh, the, the, the form that has those all of those parameters all of that functionality by default is the contact us form. So if you're looking for that functionality, meaning I want to receive or submit an email when the form is submitted, then that's the, the form that you need to clone, the, the, the contact us form um, that has everything that you need. It's just a matter of clicking that friendly button, the clone button, and you're going to be set to go. Nice. So so you created this form, and then I saw that you you had put it on a on a, on a front page of the website. Can you show us how you actually put this form on the front page of a website? Yes, sir, I'll be happy to. Now, to do that, let's go ahead and jump over here to the general settings, because we have uh, the, the field that we mentioned before, the form variable name, this comes into play through this process, throughout this process. So let's go ahead and copy the name of the form, all right? This is not the only place where you can get the name of the form, by, by the way. I'll go ahead and close this and I'll show you the same name you can Go ahead and copy the same name right from this section here. It's again, it's just the uh, name that the system internally uses to identify this specific new form that you created. So the process to add a form to a static page, luckily it's super easy, Jason. Um, let me go ahead and show you what I did on, on the one that I already created. So I went and to the content, edit web pages. I created a new web page. I just called it new form contact, keep it simple. Um, and right underneath what I did was that I used the uh, short code form equals and the name of the form. So I just went ahead and inside brackets, typed in form equals form new form info. That's going to print the raw form, right? No styling or anything around that. Correct. Exactly. Just basically, uh, just basically grabs the information from the form and it pastes that on the, on the page where you add that. Um, you can always take, this one step further, you can go ahead and create a widget, call the form on the widget, and then call that widget on the static page. It's just another um, another extra step. Um, it does require a little bit more work. It takes a little bit more time. Um, but if you do want to go that route, definitely encourage. Um, the uh, the other thing is that if you are creating this new 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 page, you might as well create a very nice landing page, right? You're taking the time to go ahead and create this new form and um, open this channel to the user of the website. Creating a very nice stylized um, landing page is not complicated at all. Um, this has been discussed several times already throughout the webinars. So yeah, you might as well just take that extra step, create that nice landing page, and add this new form onto that landing page. Very nice. Um, cool. So yeah, when you save that form, then like Jason said, it just basically comes raw no style whatsoever, it's just basically the form, but it does have all the functionality that we've just talked about. The ability to submit the form, the ability to respect what the, the um, form fields um, do, right? Meaning allowing you to choose only one or several or open up the dropdown. Um, yeah, this is basically how that comes up. 